we'll roll through each one of these items. And uh, if you have questions or comments or you have staff presentations, you, know, you folks just stop me and then we'll, uh, we'll cover each item that way, okay? All right, of course, <coughs> section one will be the opening of the meeting, section two, approval of the agenda. Section three will be recognitions, and I think we have three. 3.1, recognition of Choctahatchee High School Indianette Dance Team State Champions in the Small Varsity Hip Hop and Small Varsity Palm Divisions at the Florida Dance Championships presented by Superintendent Marcus Chambers. 3.2, recognition of Ruckel Middle School Majorette Team 2019 Twin Mania International Champions in the Junior High Halftime Division presented by Superintendent Chambers. 3.3, recognition of the community partnership with the Air Force Research Laboratory, Brian Mitch Mitchell, STEM Education Outreach Coordinator, presented by Superintendent Marcus Chambers. Section 4, we have no visitors that have gone through that process. Section 5, public comment, we don't yet know. Section 6, administrative personnel appointments. 6.1, appointment to the position of Route Coordinator, Transportation South, recommended by Superintendent Marcus Chambers. Is that uh, something you're prepared to talk about at this time, or uh, we'll wait till Monday night? I think we'll wait till Monday night. Okay. 6.2, appointment of athletic director, Niceville High School, recommended by the superintendent for approval. We might not need to talk about that one. I think that's been in the newspaper. <laughs> but you're welcome to, superintendent. We can I, wait. Th I think you said that well. Okay. <laughs> 6.3, appointment of Destin Elementary School, assistant principal recommended by the superintendent for approval. Still in process? Yes, sir. All right. So board members, that means Monday night, we'll anticipate uh, uh, quite, uh, quite a, uh, a lot of people. An amount, right. <laughs> All right, so uh, <clears throat> 6.4, appointment of assistant superintendent curriculum and instruction recommended by the superintendent for approval. Same thing? Yes, sir. Wait till Monday. And, and of course, folks, you know that these interviews take a long time and, and they're probably, they're still probably in process. All right, 6.5, appointment of assistant superintendent human resources recommended by the superintendent for approval. I, I would just like to make a comment real sure. quick. Uh, okay. Mr. Chambers, I know this is, uh, you, you know, you've been in your position for a couple months and I know we've talked extensively about things that you're planning on uh, accomplishing as, as your term as superintendent. I also, you know, made a comment to you that I felt like this position was probably going to be the most important decision that you were going to make in your short term so far. I would just ask that you and your staff, when you make this recommendation, remember that this that this particular position is going to have a far-reaching effect not only on the school district but in the community as whole, as a whole because as we know a lot has transpired over the last couple of years out of this particular department so i have the utmost confidence that you're going to choose the right person but i hope that the person that is chosen fits everything that we're looking for in a human resource person so i just wanted you to know that sir thank you and, and i'll make a comment in one second but i think dr kelly has a, uh, a comment as well i do and you must have been reading my mind and certainly i'm not saying anything that the superintendent and I haven't had comments about or conversations about but I just think particularly in that one assistant superintendent position human resources we owe it to every employee and every parent and everyone in this community to do due diligence to find that person with the depth and breadth of experience who can train up and help us build capacity and with the knowledge that will set us in good stead, not just for the next two years or four years, but for the next few decades, because that is the one position that can shield all of our employees and all of us <coughs> from embarrassment, from harm, from hardship, and from litigation. And so to me, that's what I'm hoping that we will be able to attract and to retain here. And, and I have a comment before you, sir. And, um, I, I mean, I certainly feel the same way that all, all of you do. Um, and I don't even know how many applicants we've had or where we're at with that process. Um, and, and that's okay with me because I, I certainly feel like <coughs> this burden falls upon the superintendent to make this appointment. And, uh, but what I have said <coughs> to the superintendent is that I, I actually feel 
pretty good about it, although I feel a little bit sorry for him because with his background recent, in recent months in human resources, I will think in my imagination that the superintendent will be the go-to person when there are personnel issues with your experience. So uh, I think that, frankly, will serve us well as we head into this new appointment. And that's what I have to say, Mr. Chambers. No, absolutely, and, and, I, and I appreciate that. And I, and I also appreciate the concern of the board. And I think you know, uh, I think it was February 2018 that I took over the, uh, the Human Resources um, Department. And uh, I think that uh, there, were, there were experiences that I had um, that, that helped me and there were things that I learned during that year from February 2018 going forward. So we have approximately five, uh, five individuals who have applied for the HR position. Okay. And two of those individuals are internal, three of them are outside the, uh, mm -hmm. the school district. So if you, you may recall, normally these positions are advertised for five days. We doubled it. The HR position we advertise for 10 days. And we actually, it actually ended this past, uh, this past Saturday. So we even went into the, the weekend to give people um, more time. So the individuals who applied were, were the five who, um, who had a full um, application. And on Friday, I will go ahead and uh, interview those, uh, those five individuals and then make a decision based on those interviews. And when we say advertise, was that within the school district or anywhere else, or how did we do that? Thank you, Dr. White. So that was within the school district and outside the school district. Miss uh, um, Maxey, I believe that that was um, sent out nationally, and you wow. can tell me the actual uh, the actual sites as well as across the state of Florida. So we made a national advertisement. Yes. Yeah, so we use Indeed.com, which wow. goes everywhere. Okay. That's a national. And we got five. Well, and Ms. Max, if you if you come back, I think we had five we had five who Total. actually um, who had qualifications I for had this complete application. I understand. Okay. How many in total did we I actually have? I believe that there was fifteen. Okay. But I, I'm not a hundred percent about that That's number. Not, but there was okay. fifteen. Okay. But then five that were qualified okay. that are going to be interviewed. Yes, ma'am. I see. Excellent. All right, any further questions or comments about that? Well, I, I do want to make a comment to Mr. Chambers' remarks about him and his position, and I do realize that that was a unique situation for you, and I've told you personally that I felt like in that particular situation, you did, you have done the best job that you possibly could, and you've had to learn on the go. I think moving forward, we need to make sure that the person that you select doesn't have to have a learning curve as much. They need to have that experience. They need to understand the law. They need to understand policy, and they need to be able to be able to do it, uh, you know, without any. How do I say it? Without any uh, interference, you know. So, uh, you know, so I know this is this is your biggest selection you're going to make. I know, and uh, you know, but like I said earlier, I, th you know, your situation was a little different, uh, but now that you have the opportunity to put somebody in that position. We need to make sure, you know, like I said, I just hope it's that person that has that human human resource qualifications that we're looking for. And, Thank and you. I would concur, and it wouldn't matter to me if we had to extend that deadline out or throw the net out again to get the best person that can lead us forward and <clears throat> help us all do better in the future. Any other comments or questions? And so since we have five appointments, it uh, looks like, um, Monday evening, Mr. McKinnis. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, you might uh, spend a little time taking us through the uh, legal requirements uh, regarding the superintendent's nomination and uh, our duty uh, to approve it. Okay. Yes, sir. In, a, in accordance with Florida law, it is the uh, responsibility and duty of the superintendent to uh, process the go through the hiring process and to make selections and make recommendations to the school board for the person to fill positions. Once he has made those recommendations uh, in accordance with Florida law, the board's review of that is to determine that uh, there, there is no just cause to not approve the recommendation. 
because short of that, the, the law requires you to approve those recommendations unless you can find just cause as to the individual uh, determining, for instance, that they um, that there's something in their background that makes them not eligible to be employed by a public school district, uh, some issue there that uh, they don't meet the basic qualifications of the job description that was advertised. Those are the things that, that would entitle you to reject a superintendent's recommendation. Okay. So I've been trying to explain that to people for a long time. <laughs> but I appreciate, I appreciate that. Chairman, if I yes, may sir. ask, just to, and I, and I take this for granted, uh, Mr. Chambers, you can tell me if it's not the case. You know, the background checks you run on these candidates before you make the decision. In other words, I, I would question the ability to run a background check starting Friday afternoon for a Monday meeting, but you guys have already done that to make sure there's nothing in the background of these applicants. And I'm going to ask Ms. Maxey to come forward. So, pending, that's a good question, Mr. Dessen. So pending that it would, if it was an outside candidate, we would have to ensure that we could get the background check before Monday. Mm -hmm. So we would do that. Okay. And the internal ones we've already done that on. Correct. Okay. Thanks. Correct. Yes. Okay. Anything else on this particular matter? <laughs> well, don't I, worry. Well, I just think you know, it's one of those things that people are watching. <laughs> and we, we, you know, I concur that we want to, we want to make that right step and get, get it moving on. And so, um, I'm so <coughs> confident that you and your staff will do that. So, I'm eager to see who you present to us come Monday night. And and you you may choose to inform the board members individually before before Monday night. So so that That's right, that, yeah. that might happen too. And. Uh, one good thing about it, we can have more discussion about this Monday night if uh, if we choose to. Okay. Absolutely. All right. All right, then. Unless there's anything else, I'm ready to move on. All right. <clears throat> so let's go to Section 7, Committee and Staff Reports. 7.1, in-county travel paid for the period of February 7, 20 through 2019, presented by Ms. Rita Scallon, Chief Financial Officer. 7.2, out-of-county travel paid for the period of February 7th through February the 20th, 2019, presented by Mrs. Rita Scallon, Chief Financial Officer. And then 7.3, Triumph Gulf Coast OCSD forward slash SHU Educational Foundation forward slash NWFSC Partnership, presented by Ms. April Branscombe, Specialist Career and Technical Education. Mr. Chambers, I think she's here. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. With, with your permission, I'd like uh, Ms. Branscombe to come up. All right. That's your cue call. Welcome, Ms. Branscombe. Thank you. Thanks for allowing me to come in and speak about the progress of our Triumph Grant. As you know, last year I, I came before you and requested some funding to assist us to get started. Um, we met with the Triumph Board a couple of weeks ago, and they were giving us a different direction that they want us to go in the first piece of our of our grant process so we're going to change our request and go a little bit different direction and since we only had one meeting in march we felt like we needed to present the information to you today not not that this is anything that we're we have set in stone yet all the guidelines and the things that we're doing for the grant but we just wanted you to be aware of what we're doing and hopefully in april we can come back to you with more information of the exact process and everything that we're doing with the grant um, the triumph board encouraged us to create a public pr a private partnership and collaborate with northwest florida state college and the shu educational foundation and as you know, Dr. Shu, um, Paul Shu has a lot of uh, influence in our community and um, with our governmental agency. And of course, the Triumph Board as well. And so what they've asked us to do is to partner and to focus on the Bob Sykes Airport, which is um, they're creating, Dr. Shu is working with Northwest Florida State College um, with a, a lease agreement there, and they're creating an A&P program, Northwest Florida State College is. So they want us to focus, because industry is calling for us to focus on um, careers dealing with the aerospace industry, manufacturing, cybersecurity, robotics, and those types of things. So they want us to partner with them 
to uh, focus on the North Campus and, uh, and Crestview High School area. So as you see in your packet that we submitted uh, for this presentation today, um, we are going to be focusing on three areas. Uh, the advanced manufacturing, but if you remember the last board meeting, I presented the appropriations piece of it. That we are still going to ask for in our Triumph proposal, just in case we don't get it in the uh, appropriations funding. We felt safe to do that, and we did note it uh, in our um, paperwork to Dr. Shu that we would withdraw that request if we do receive the appropriations funding, uh, a portion of that, should I say, because that's a two-piece uh, deal there. Uh, the other pieces that we're doing is we want to co-locate at, at Crestview High School their applied cybersecurity, their robotics, and their engineering program. Right now they're all located in different areas and we want to co-locate them in one area at Crestview High School. They have a, a room that's not being used in the way it was originally uh, perceived to be used and so we're going to convert that to those labs. It will give those um, classes lab space and classroom space to do the things they need to do. We are going to work to increase the certifications that they earn and hopefully those students can feed into the Bob Sykes Center of Excellence and either go into our advanced manufacturing program or to the AMP uh, program at Northwest Florida State College. Um, right now, Dr. Shu has requested to be the lead of this request and so we're still working out all the details between Northwest Florida State College and uh, the Shu Foundation and Oakland County School Board. Mr. Chambers has met with um, both the, uh, the, the college and Dr. Shu, and, and I'm speaking for Mr. Chambers now, but I think he's really looking forward to creating this partnership and working with them. We feel like this is a really a good place to be because they the, we're doing what the Triumph Board asked us to do. We're still keeping our, our plan to do the things at the schools that we wanted to do with the original grant, but we're going to do it in a, a phase format instead of all at once. We think it'll be easier for them to take in and be more willing to present us that, the, the funds for those requests as well. Uh, they want us to be a leader for all the other eight counties um, across you know, the panhandle because that's one of the things from the very beginning that they were looking for us to do to make this public-private partnership. So we're going to be kind of the, the leader for all the other counties. So they're going to look at us and say, see what Okaloosa County did. We want you to, to form those kind of partnerships as well. We don't have all the intricacies of all the pieces of it yet. We do hope to have that um, hopefully by the end of the month, the first part of April, so we can come back to you with that presentation of the, the full request and everything that we're asking for. Is there any questions? Well, there may be. Let's let's see. <laughs> yes. Okay. Board members, do you have any uh, questions mm -hmm. or comments about uh, uh, the presentation? I'm just, just excited about it. I think it's great. Do you have any idea how we're looking down in Tallahassee with the two pieces we're trying to get? Well, they're still, they had the committee hearings, and we did go for that a couple of weeks ago, right. and we've got a lot of great um, feedback from it, but we, we don't know until they actually get into the subcommittee hearings full, full force, and hopefully we'll be able to go back over there and, and meet with them some more. Right. But, I mean, we feel good about it, but, you know, we were told, um, I think it was uh, Mel Ponder, Representative Ponder told us that um, Northwest Florida last year, they had one in and they thought they had it and he came home to Destin and got a phone call Saturday night that said hey that's being chopped he had to turn around and go back the next morning so it, it's kind of a um, in know. play for a while until the, the, the 11th hour so we're hoping that we get it but if we don't we're using this as a backup well thank you for all you do and your staff this thing you know what I think that what you were saying about other people looking <clears throat> towards Okaloosa, I think we really are a forerunner in this, particularly up in the up in this area of the state. Yes, and um, it's exciting, and thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kelly, thank you. I was just going to give kudos to April. I've known her work for a long time, and everything her hands touch turns to, to gold, and we just appreciate what you do. You. And primarily the fact that you're forward thinking and that her heart is for the students. Right. So I appreciate that. Well, and I have to say, this has been a team effort. Mm -hmm. It's been, you know, a lot of folks working on this. Ms. Gates, uh, Mr. Chambers, uh, Mr. Horton, myself, uh, David Johnson, uh, the Shoe Foundation. I mean, we had a fabulous meeting a few weeks ago with Dr. Shu and uh, I mean, there were, and uh, Ms. Gallen. I mean, there were just, it was unique. 
I mean, we couldn't have done that had we planned it. It was just like a, the, on Thursday we planned to meet on Friday, and we got everybody together, and it was just it was a really good meeting. So we we were creating some really um, strong partnerships, and we look forward to continue those partnerships and even make more and make them stronger. Mm -hmm. and I think that's okay. what's uh, another good component of it is you have people like Dr. Shu. Mm -hmm. We have not just him, but other folks in the community yes. that bring their ideas to us. And like Dr. Kelly said, you take it and start thinking forward with it. So it is very exciting that the programs that we are that we have in place and what our vision and hopefully we can get all this done to so we can be the place, uh, the education place in uh, in all of Florida where you can go for technicals, uh, college, whatever. Yes. There's going to be every avenue is going to be open for our students and and it's just going to be a, a great thing for our well, I, I, Friday morning to that about the schools, um, excuse me, Monday morning, we had an EDC meeting, roundtable breakfast, and there was a gentleman, uh, Eric Walker, who was here from uh, MC, which is a site selection organization. And one of the things that they say is the top site selection for companies to come to our area is the school system. And so we were very proud of that and very thankful for that and we want to keep pushing our, our students and pushing our programs to so so we keep that as the number one thing for people in industry coming to our area Absolutely. Right, anything else one one question and and to find uh, someone that's more enthusiastic and driven than dr. Shu is going to be very difficult <laughs> uh, I've had several meetings with him and I'm yeah. really impressed a partnership means we bring something to the table too and and you mentioned consolidating we're consolidating up at, at this new proposed facility, I, I take it. The advanced manufacturing piece is where we're going to move. Um, we currently have it at Northwest Florida State College, mm -hmm. and we're going to move it to the Bob Sykes Center of Excellence there. And Dr. Shu is very passionate about the A&P program, yep. and um, he is wanting us to be able to give him a pipeline of students to go into that program. Okay. So our plan is to have our students, if they start in our advanced manufacturing in ninth and 10th grade, that in the 11th and 12th grade year, they have the opportunity to take dual enrollment for the A&P program through Northwest Florida State College. So they would feed into that program. It's our understanding that Boeing is looking at that facility and they are already ready to hire these students before they ever finish the A&P program and uh, give them a contract to sign so they will, will be able to hire them. Um, and he did. He threw out the figure of $65,000 a year to start out with with their A&P license. Now they would have more school after they finished their the first two years through the districts, 11th and 12th grade, but um, the cost would be much less for this, you know, for the student to finish school. So they wouldn't have that that student debt. Um, so that's the big piece there. So we're he's providing the facility for Northwest Florida State College, and we're providing the students to feed into it. Uh, for the college dual enrollment do we provide transportation uh, we will not for the dual enrollment no sir we we will provide the transportation as we currently do for the advanced manufacturing right. program okay. but the dual enrollment students are on their own for transportation okay thanks and you're welcome you've done a very good job thank you any further questions or comments uh, I, I just have one and, and that would be that uh, board members you'll see that this is a, an information item mm -hmm. And uh, require no action on our part, and uh, and and so what? And I appreciate the the update because I think what this really is is kind of just an update, and that at a later time, yes. you will be bringing forward an item to put on the agenda for action, and at, at that juncture, I guess we'll see the the hard details. Yes, sir. Of, of what what our plan will actually be. That's exactly right. We look to work that out. Hopefully. In the next couple of weeks yes, to get the final information to you. I understand, Mr. Chambers. You have something? Yes, sir. And I, and I too would like to thank uh, April and David for the, for their work in this uh, in this program. They've done a great job. But like you just said, Dr. White, we wanted to be certain that since we're working on this, that that the board clearly knows what is um, what is going on, so you understand every step of the way. I do want to say, big picture wise, it was interesting, you know, talking through this process. So aviation is is a is a big component and piece to this. And literally from Pensacola to Panama City, the different airports that are within this region. So we, the school district, is, is a big component of this. And the work that we do with this program also sets the, the local economy up for, for success as we go forward. And I think this program from the Triumph Board 
um, understand the significance of the school district and just once again couldn't be prouder of the relationship with Dr. Shu and Dr. Stevenson and they have been fantastic um, partners for the school district. Okay. Very good. Any Anything questions? else? All right. All right. Thank you, Ms. Thank Mayor. you. <clears throat> All right, board members. So now that brings us to section eight, and that would be the consent agenda. And so we'll go through each one of these items. <clears throat> eight point one's approval. Eight point two will be the approval of the minutes of workshop meeting of February 21, 2019. Minutes of regular meeting of February 25, 2019, recommended by the superintendent. Eight point three appropriation of District One School Board member capital outlay funds to Choctatchee High School for an auditorium curtain in the amount of $10,000 recommended by myself and recommended by the superintendent for approval. 8.4, appropriation of District 3 school board member capital outlay funds to Florosa Elementary School for a projector in the amount of $2,091.37 presented by Mrs. Linda Vanchak and recommended by the superintendent for approval. 8.5, appropriation of District 4 school board member capital outlay funds to Shoal River Middle School for corridor lockers in the amount of $5,091 presented by Tim Bryant and recommended by the superintendent for approval. 8.6, appropriation of District 4 school board member capital outlay funds to Laurel Hill School for an HP DesignJet T730 format printer in the amount of $2,776 presented by board member Tim Bryan and recommended by the superintendent. Uh, Dr. White, yes, since uh, Ms. Branscombe mm -hmm. is here, this, partic uh, this particular uh, printer is a 3D printer that's going to complement the uh, computers that we just got mm -hmm. for them a couple of uh, months ago. So this is really exciting for those students up at Laurel Hill. They're going to have a, a nice 3D printer. So it was, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Bryant. 8.7, invoices to be approved for payment. Presented by Ms. Rita Scallon, Chief Financial Officer, and recommended by the Superintendent. 8.8, .8, school donations. Presented by Ms. Rita Scallon, Chief Financial Officer, and recommended by the Superintendent. Uh, Dr. Yes, White, sir. again, uh, uh, there is quite a few uh, anonymous donors on here, but I would like to say that we are very appreciative of, of all of our community sponsors when they step up to the plate to donate. I do want to make a, comp, uh, a comment to Dr. White. Uh, I was at a business in Crestview yesterday, uh, and this particular owner of this business uh, came up to me and wanted to talk to me about school board business, and she wanted me to know that she had received a letter that was assigned by Dr. White thanking her for her donation to uh, to the particular organization that she donated to it in the school district. So, uh, you know, I think by us sending those letters out, Dr. White, I, 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 and I made that comment to you earlier, I think this is a good thing that we recognize them through some type of communication that we do appreciate them because not everybody watches our school board meetings and they don't hear us when we say thank you. So, uh, Dr. White, I did want to just extend that to you saying thank you very much for sending those letters out. Well, thank you, Mr. Bryant. <clears throat> and what I would say, and, and board members, this is certainly good for you to know, and I appreciate that comment. That those are letters that are actually prepared by by Mary and Jan, mm -hmm. and uh, all I have to do is sign them, <laughs> and they do all the work, and uh, we are very grateful uh, to Mary and Jan for for doing all that because it it is important to recognize all of these folks that 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 contribute so much money to this school mm -hmm. system. And, uh, anyway, thank you, Mary, and, and thanks, Jan, too. Thank you, Mr. Bryant. You're welcome. <clears throat> All right, 8.9, self-help project, track facility upgrade, phase two for Fort Walton Beach High School presented by Dr. Bill Smith, specialist facilities planning and maintenance and recommended by the superintendent for approval. Dr. White. Yes, sir. So uh, to the general public, a self-help <clears throat> project is actually uh, money that has come from the community again to help uh, uh, with this particular project. And I believe this is going to resurface the track field at Fort Walton Beach High School. So again, thank you to all of those who have contributed to uh, their track club to help get this uh, done. And it's going to be, I don't know if, if it's going to look like Niceville's track. If, yep. So again, thank you to those that have helped contribute to this. Absolutely. I think they raised in excess of $100,000. Yeah. And, and this will actually make it possible for them to have some track meets that are more regional in nature. Right. Yeah, it was kind of neat when you go to Fort Walton Beach. They had the big thermometer up by their track field, and you can kind of see it getting colored in. So we knew it was getting close. So, All right. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. 
All right, so we'll go ahead and move to 8.10, National Purchasing Cooperative Interlocal Participation Agreement by Board, presented by Mr. Vince Windham, Program Director Purchasing, and recommended by the Superintendent for approval. 8.11, Facility Use Purchase Over 5,000, Cross Point United Methodist Church, presented by Mr. Vince Windham, Program Director Purchasing, and recommended by the Superintendent for approval. 8.12, Renewal of RFP 10-P-04, Intercom System Program, presented by Mr. Vince Windham, Program Director Purchasing, and recommended by the Superintendent for approval. Chairman, if I may, yes, I've sir. noticed that this contract's been in place for <laughs> right at 10 years. And it looks like this is a one-year extension, is that correct? Thank you, Mr. Wyndham. Yes, you're correct. It, it's originally a five-year term. And we and renewed it. We were able to renew yeah. up to five years. This is the last time we can renew. And they're actually holding their pricing from year five. So that's the only way we can renew. We can't change the pricing. We'd have to go back out. So they're holding their pricing for the fifth year. And, and I applaud you for getting a one more year bite uh, I would just suggest so after 11 years it's always good in the government business to go out for RFQs and see what is available yes sir and, and another thing on this one now the original package it, they were I don't remember the schools it's been so long ago uh, there were two or three schools that had major projects issues, with intercons yeah. and that that was inside this same contract and so what we've worked on worked on past that is just the basically a labor rate to come in and fix what we've already so all their, their maintenance basically on that's, the system right that's basically what they're doing yeah that's, that's okay. all we're doing at this point thanks yes sir thank you mr windham all right so we'll go on down to 8.13 tag on bid purchase over twenty five thousand. apple presented by mr vince windham program director purchasing and recommended by the superintendent 8.14 tag on bid purchase over 25,000 All American Tracks Corporation presented by Mr. Vince Windham program director purchasing and recommended by the superintendent. 8.15 tag on bid purchase over 25,000 William Scotsman presented by Mr. Vince Windham program director purchasing and recommended by the superintendent. 8.16 sale and disposal of surplus property presented by Mr. Steve Bolton Director of Facilities Planning and Maintenance and recommended by the Superintendent. 8.17, Surplus of School Buses, presented by Mr. Jay McGinnis, Program Director of Transportation and recommended by the Superintendent. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Can I have Mr. McGinnis come up a minute, please? Good morning. How Good are morning. you? Um, I just wanted to have you come up mainly for the benefit of our, our public uh -huh. about what's going on with the buses. Um, as you know, uh, more than, than we do, transportation, buses seem to be the one thing that, that the, the public likes to comment on with our bus situation. And I know that we got some buses from Escambia County. We did. So if you can kind of explain the exchange out with this group. I know we're, we're giving Baker School, not, not Baker School, the fire department we at are. Baker one of the buses for them to use but the ones that we have on surplus we're basically just changing out is that they correct are, they're older model buses 19 early 1990 model buses so they're a lot of them are 28 29 30 years old right. they're no longer good to us they're not running um, they don't look very appealing anymore and we're trying to make room for the buses that we got from Muscambia County on our lot and our lots are just full with all those new buses from Muscambia so we're simply getting rid of things that aren't any good to us anymore just um, like any other property if we surplus them then we will get with mr bolton and put them on the um right. the next uh, auction if we can't sell them at an auction then what our, our other option is to take them to the scrap yard and get whatever they will pay us for scrap which is about two cents a pound right now yep. not much right. but um that's what we intend to do with the ones that we're going to surplus as well so basically they were just sitting there taking up space yes they were you just got to get them get them out of there and so we, we choose we kind of overhaul and reevaluate the bus and if it's going to cost us too much to fix it sure. and depending mm -hmm. on what age it is at some point we just have to move on and, and scrap it and surplus it so at this point getting rid of those our our older buses are about how old 
We're, we're 95 to 99 is what we're kind of using for spare buses now in those okay. ranges. Uh, Muscambia County was able to give us those buses and that helped us take just about everything off the road on a daily route that was a 1999 model or older. Good. So everything on a, a new route, or not a new route, but a daily route is 99 or newer. So we're almost into this century. So we're almost into this century. <laughs> now we just still have some spares, like I right. said, that we have to use when things break down that are um, 95 to 99, but we're trying to get to that point to, to get them on the road where everything is, is newer and, because the seat belt issue is, is the thing too. Everything after 2000 has seat belts on. Right. So. Right, yeah. Well again, I know that's a, a big undertaking to keep those buses right. and keeping that fleet going and, and of course keeping bus drivers is, sure. is a challenge so thank and you for I that. can assure you if we were if we had a bus that was still good we wouldn't be getting rid of it because right. we're not buying very many obviously because of the situation so we've kept them as long as we possibly can keep them in case we needed them for some reason but we don't need them at this point so Okay. Thank you, sir, All for right. that Thank explanation. You. I think Anything else, uh, Mr. McKinnis? I yeah, think. I think we can give a shout out to our mechanics who help keep those mm -hmm. buses running. So, Absolutely. Uh, you know, unfortunately, some of them, you know, have to drive buses in this time and day, but then they get back out there and mm -hmm. they're working just as hard to keep those buses running. They do, and they're, they, they keep them running and keep our fleet in good shape and safe, and that's the most important thing. And um, they know that the task at hand, and they do it without complaining, and and I appreciate them doing that because they right. do a good job of keeping them safe and sound. So, all right, and I think that's it. Thank you, Mr. All right, thank you. Thank yes, you. <coughs> all right, uh, eight point one eight. Donate one surplus school bus to the Baker Fire Department. Presented by Mr. Jay McKinnis, Program Director, Transportation, and recommended by the Superintendent for approval. Eight point one nine. <clears throat> motor vehicle lease agreement for disaster transportation services between the Air Force and Listed Village Incorporated DBA Hawthorne House <coughs> presented by Mr. Jay McKinnis, Program Director Transportation and recommended by the Superintendent for approval. I think this is a great partnership to have that bus there to help get those individuals out if we have a, you know, a situation like a hurricane, whatever. I think that's, that's a great partnership that we're doing. All right, thank you, Ms. Vinci. 8.20, summer school programs for 2019 SIS ESY Summer Scholars and Junior Lifeguard Program for credit, presented by Mrs. Sheila Lightborn, Director of Secondary Curriculum Instruction and recommended by the Superintendent for approval. Uh, I would just like to comment that this is a great program since we're so close to the water. It gives these uh, students an opportunity to get credit, plus, uh, you know, they can get a job at Big Kahuna's over the summer or somewhere where they need a lifeguard. So I think this is a win-win for, for everybody. Thank you, Mr. Bryant. <clears throat> All right, so section nine, superintendents, human resources recommendations, 9.1. Employees on administrative leave presented by Ms. Lindsay Maxey, program director, human resources, information item. 9.2, deferred retirement option program drop presented by Ms. Lindsay Maxey, program director, human resources, again, information. 9.3 out of field report for 2018-2019 school year presented by Ms. Karen Peake, Program Director of Professional Services and recommended by the Superintendent for approval. 9.4 best and brightest scholarship program pre-K teachers presented by Ms. Lindsay Maxey, Program Director of Human Resources and recommended by the Superintendent for approval. I would like Ms. Maxey yeah. to come up on this topic please. All right, Mr. Chambers, uh, we'd like to call Ms. Maxey. Absolutely. Okay, Ms. Maxey. All right, Ms. Evanjek, since you asked her to come forward, would you go ahead, please? Please, thank you. Um, can you please give us the start with the status of this best and brightest, particularly towards the, the pre-K teachers, where, where we are on that, please? Okay, so what this is, is, you know, previously we decided that we were going to request from the state, because we did not have anywhere in writing not to do anything like this, that we would get money for our pre-k teachers for the best and brightest so we've we have requested those funds so we have to pay the funds to teachers by <coughs> april 1st and so now 
we've come across this audit finding from Clay County, which specifically shows where they had done this and they did pay their pre-K teachers. And then if you guys look in there, it specifically shows the recommended action is that those pre-K teachers would now pay back those funds. So that's where we are. And I, I just, I do not want us to get into a situation of teachers having to pay back funds. And, and I appreciate that, and frankly, in, in my opinion, because you did discover this information, uh, I think, uh, first of all, I appreciate you bring it forward, and in fact, you might even be compelled to do so. So thank you for doing that. Um, any, any other questions about this matter? And, and I, I, I agree with that. Certainly, we don't want to get, quote, in trouble. We want to follow the, the letter of the law. This, this program has been a little... Um, <laughs> dubious, should I say, from the beginning, which is not our fault. This is coming from the state. Mm -hmm. However, my concern with this is that if you tell employees they're going to get some money and you've requested the money and now we're turning around and telling them, no, you're not getting the money, I have a problem with that. I, I just don't think that's accurate. I understand that we, you know, we have to follow the law, but <coughs> we still are just looking at an audit it, audit here we haven't actually gotten anything official and I believe this came up before with the board going to ask someone out of Tallahassee to give us a statement on what we should be doing about this right Mr. Right. McKinnis would you speak yes, to that we, matter we we wrote to the Attorney General uh, some months ago asking for clarification in regard to the board's authority to make those ultimate decisions uh, about uh, who those would be awarded to we do not yet have a response back um, however this audit finding from the Auditor General I think is significant and I think is certainly a precedent we need to look at because if you'll remember um, Mr. Chambers and HR had already tried to talk to the Auditor General's office and get a, an answer from them as to some of these categories that there were questions about whether or not they should be funded and they would not give a direct answer as to any particular category. So at least now by finding an, audit, an official audit report they've issued, they have indirectly given that answer because they have now found that that district should not have paid those monies to that category of employee. Um, and, and so- And the corrective action they're asking and then, for? And, and the corrective action is number one, that the district is not, and Ms. Scallon can correct me if I'm wrong, number one, that the district return the money uh, that they paid out and that the district then take action to recover that money from the employees that received it. That's my understanding. It's a two-prong approach. So both the district has liability for that and then potentially the employees that got it have liability to pay that back. So I think that, that this recommendation is correctly trying to avoid that scenario for that category of instructional staff. And if I can just make a comment, and I know Mr. Vancheck and Dr. Kelly were not on the board when this came up, but I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I, I don't think we ever promised anybody we weren't going to do any, we weren't going to pay them until we until the April 1st deadline, I believe it was, until we got some type of hearing from the Attorney General. Now, obviously, that has not happened, but because of your due diligence, you found some, like you said, some compelling arguments on why we shouldn't pay that out. That, at this time so it was my understanding that in order to um, in the event we had gotten an answer that would have let the board classify those employees to receive the pay right. we went ahead as a district and applied for it for those employees that wanted right. to but I was under the impression that certain categories of those employees were aware that that the board was awaiting a decision right. and that although we were applying because if you missed the deadline you don't you right. we couldn't have paid them if we'd gotten a an affirmative decision about that um, but um, now that we have this information I think that it's incumbent upon the district to look at that well and, and, and I just add that uh, <laughs> I, I don't I, I would imagine I would guess that this particular audit finding mm -hmm. might be relevant to the Attorney General that we've asked for an opinion from well, and keeping in mind determined. that our request to them was was a little bit broader in that we were trying right. to get clarification as to the authority right. of the school board under right. those statutes to make right. that ultimate decision. Right. I'm not sure that they were going to ever give an opinion as to this category is, this category isn't. But 
I think you're right that the Auditor General having found this, because when we provided all of our information to the Attorney General's office, we certainly let them know we had inquired of the Auditor General and, and did not get an answer. Right. So right. we may find out that we actually yep. get an opinion. And if we got an opinion that's contrary to right. this audit Could finding, happen. then the Attorney General is the one who gives opinions about what the law says, not that's the Auditor right. General. That's right. Uh, let me ask one other question and, and perhaps have a recommended course of action here. Uh, have we communicated to the Auditor General this audit finding and specifically asked them if, if this is their opinion on whether or not it's legal? In other words, I'd like to, I mean, they've got an audit finding here and I'd like to pin them down to where they have to say, yes, we think that's what the law says, or no, we don't really think our audit finding really has any. Can we ask that question? Since we've asked them several times to give us an opinion, which they've declined to do, now they have one of their own findings. I think we need to wrap it up and send it back to them and, and ask, is this your opinion? This might be a question for our finance folks. Mrs. Well, Scott. The, what the law says is not a is not the finance folks. I, I understand that, but yeah. I, I think this is in her area of okay. expertise in terms of audit findings. Yep. Okay, typically what happens Stay close, with Miss Maxie. Typically what happens with um, with the audit and the auditor general is that they are never going to give you a recommendation or a direction on any statute or any um, audit because they have to audit that subject. So therefore, um, it's a conflict of interest if they say, yes, you can do this or no, you can't do this, and then they're auditing you. That's a conflict of interest. So they're never going to give you the, au the auditor general is not. Now, the bottom line is that the auditor general is going from the standpoint that if you read the statute, it references the definition of a, of a teacher, which is K through 12, and these are pre-K. So they, if you, I mean, you can contact them and you can ask them, but I would venture to tell you um, in my 30 some odd years of experience, they're not going to say yes or no. They're going to tell you the statute says this and this is what we're auditing based on. And since that statute says K through 12 and pre-K is not K through 12, then, then they're not going to include those people and that's why you probably have this audit finding. Now this audit finding just came on board because they're doing the uh, 17, 18 year in February. So there probably will be more that will um, follow the same So, um, <coughs> so the you're same saying that I guess that in your experience is that once it appears one place, it starts to appear other places? Um, typically the Auditor General is all under the umbrella of the State Auditor General and typically, um, you know, they're consistent in their application of um, rules, regulations, audit um, findings. So I would venture to say that you will find more than one district that will have this common finding by the end of the um, audit cycle for the 17-18 year. All right, so Mr. Destin, I think though you, you may still wish to make that inquiry. Um, and I, I guess the department would be the question, which department would make that inquiry? Right, and, and the other question is, um, ultimately we've still got 30 days to get our attorney general opinion should they feel uh, some kind of urgency on the matter which we know they don't right, keep keeping in mind though that opinion comes back and it simply addresses the authority of the school board to make these decisions under the um, parameters of the statute then I think this auditor general's report is still very relevant as, as you set to make your decision I think you would have to consider other official reports you see in the state where there was another agency interpreting what that said okay Ms. Scanlon did we ever make a calculation of what it would cost the district to pay those pre-k teachers If, Based if on the number that I believe have been submitted, um, it would be somewhere around $40,000. Okay. And do we have the authority to pay it ourselves should the, uh, the state say we can't do it? In other words, so that it doesn't fall back on top of the teachers? 
you as a board, uh, if you decide to allocate, um, you, you have the authority to do that. It's like the Florida teacher lead. Um, there are certain groups of teachers that are excluded from that allocation. And you as a board um, chose to allocate the um, Florida teacher lead to, to the excluded groups. So you have that authority. You just would have to say, um, that that you want to do this and where are we going to get the money from and um, whether once you do it for this year would you continue to allocate that through the budget process I know the gentleman who's chair I'm still keeping warm over here was an advocate of paying it ourselves if we had to but that never came to a vote but it's still a, it's still a possibility and dr. Whitey do you mind if I uh, make Go a couple ahead. comments mm -hmm. So, of course, I, I was the one who was intimately involved in this situation. And I think, as you, all, you remember, at the very beginning, what we were looking at was specifically what the state statute um, said. And the state statute um, stipulated K through 12 teachers. Then it has a definition of what constitutes K through 12 teachers. At that time, there were um, two groups of teachers um, that believe that they fit within the, the scope of that statute. And I'd like to take a step back just to simply say, so the, uh, the adult ed teachers, the pre-KD teachers, as you know, they work extremely hard. Our guidance counselors do, our staffing specialists do, our speech and language teachers do. Our teachers in Okaloosa County, um, I think we would all like if they all qualified for this best and brightest um, program. But our stance at the very beginning was that the pre-KD teachers and the adult ed teachers did not fit the definition of the state statute. We had a lot of conversation um, here at the board meetings, and, and I agree. Um, we brought that to the state's attorney, attorney general. the attorney general, um, for an opinion, and that opinion still has not come back. If we remember, um, I personally, and Ms. Maxey personally, contacted the, D the DOE on several occasions um, on phone in writing to try to get their um, opinion as to who's eligible as well. They would not give, um, they, they would not give an answer. So this has gone um, through many, many um, channels. So with this audit finding, uh, I'd, I'd love to give it to the pre-KD teacher, pre teachers. I'd love to give it to the guidance counselors, the staffing specialists, the speech and language teachers. My only wonder would be if we give it to the pre-KD teachers, and I know they're part of this scope, and, and, and I get that because that's what we're talking about, but then where do, where do we stop? Because we have guidance counselors working extremely hard, speech and language teachers working extremely hard, staffing specialists, media. So we have all these individuals who definitely um, deserve, based on how hard they work and based on having scores through SAT or ACT, that would qualify. And I agree with that, Mr. Chambers, and, and I don't know how we could keep from expanding it if we, how we could just do one group and the other, which gives me pause to wonder how in the world we could do it by the, by the same token. I hope maybe we'll get an attorney general's opinion in a timely fashion that, that yes, may contradict what. And I agree, Mr. Destin. I, I think that's exactly what my concern is. I mean, if we, we may start to see audit findings pop up in these other classifications that may have been yes. awarded, particularly in one of those that you that you mentioned. And, and, and in I my guess opinion, it puts the school board in a well, in, an, in an awful position. Well, I appreciate it, and in fact, I would say it it puts you in the same situation because your this particular item bears your recommendation. Yes, sir. And so we'll be voting on 9.4. To approve or reject the superintendent's recommendation and, and right do you mind if I make one more statement on that in the in the PC even if we go back to previous board meetings so once again I, I'd love to give it to all of our teachers but to give it to our pre-k teacher pre-k D teachers and then as this audit finding says that they are to to pay it back if they actually receive this money and then they were to pay it back um, I don't know too many of our employees who would be able to get this money and, and if they actually did something with it and then would have the ability to just pay it back, uh, I think that would be completely um, wrong on my part to ask them to do that. Well, and I, and I take it a step further. In my opinion, just my opinion, um, <laughs> given the fact that this audit finding has been made, 
I, I frankly don't think you have any other choice but to make this recommendation. Yes, sir. And board members, now you interpret that any way you want to in terms of the way you vote. But uh, once that's out there, I mean, um, it's, it's, it's kind of stuck unless we get lucky. Right. Like Mr. Destin has said, uh, yeah. we get uh, an attorney general's opinion. Right. And now, I think, I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, the recommendation, just so we're clear, is that we do not award it to the pre K. Is that correct? Unfortunately, yes. Okay. But one thing I want to make clear, too, is have these teachers been told they're getting this money from our district? Mm -hmm. Is that. Can you verify that? So, Ms. Savantrag, I will go and find what I, because I believe this may have happened while I was on maternity leave. There may have been some, an email that was sent to pre K teachers, so I will find it. And, and if that was the case, my understanding is that they were said, told, hey, we are going to request the money. I don't know that we'll be able to pay it to you, okay. but we're going to request it so that, um, because we had to meet the December mm -hmm. 1 deadline. Right. And I think we even told them, hey, you know, we, we've requested an opinion from um, the Attorney General. I, don't, I do not think that they were told, um, you know, were you're getting, dead set getting okay. this money. But I will verify that. And if there was an email, I'll, I'll send it to everybody so that you can see exactly what they were told. But my understanding of that is that they were just told, we are going to get an opinion, so get your okay. application in. Um, by December 1. Yeah. And, and Miss Maxey will fact check me because okay. I definitely don't want to say anything that's inaccurate so she'll fact check me. Um, I think as you remember I believe November 1st was the deadline. I think the state extended it. Um, so originally the CTE teachers who were adult ed and the pre-KD teachers weren't part of it when they extended it as we had the discussion. I think I believe and this is where you'll check me I believe we even sent a, a, a separate letter to the adult ed and to the pre-KD teachers wanting to include them in this process. And I believe there's some specific language, believe, you'll fact check me, um, in those letters. Yeah. And one more thing I'd like to say to the public is that these programs coming out of the legislature always sound really great. And we certainly want to do everything we can to give our employees these benefits. But unfortunately, they come with not clear cut, as we see here, instructions which puts us in a very awkward position in trying to figure it out. What's supposed to be a very good program to benefit the teachers has caused some, truthfully, probably some hard feelings in who gets it and who doesn't, yes. and, and that's out of our control. So and and that's, a, that's a point well taken, and I, and, and I appreciate you saying that. And, and the truth is, in my opinion, this ought to reflect directly upon the source and particularly Absolutely. that source's definition of what a teacher is. Yes. When they define a teacher is only a K through 12 teacher, um, that in my opinion, there's not a whole lot we can do because right. they're the source. They passed yeah. the law, yeah. and That's so right. we're kind of stuck. But I think it's important whenever we can to reflect back on the source of this legislation. So they need to understand it's out of our control that's right. if that's they right. come back with those parameters. And oftentimes they leave that open, but then on the audit they're coming back and penalizing and and that's wrong. Making so that's what we're up against right. a lot of times coming yeah. out of the legislature. Well and this is a great opportunity to just to get out, get get the word out that best and brightest, albeit it might be a great program if we would just take that money and invest it into our teachers, into their pay all the time, instead of making it into a bonus, I, that would definitely solve a lot of the problems there. I, I don't think it's fair to the way it's set up now that the, you know, the requirements that they have to meet. And I know the governor now mm -hmm. wants to try to redo that. That's great, but wouldn't it be great if we just invested it back into our teachers, into their pay and just. Preaching to the choir there, yep. Mr. Bryant. Yep. <laughs> You mean, you mean that we get discretion rather than having a categorical? Correct. Mm -hmm. That, that would be nice. Yeah. yeah. All right, any further discussion on this item? All right, let's move on then. <clears throat> 9.5 personnel recommendations presented by Ms. Lindsay Maxey, Program Director, Human Resources, and recommended by the Superintendent. 9.6 employment separations presented by Ms. Lindsay Maxey, Program Director, Human Resources, and recommended by the Superintendent. 
9.7, employee transfers presented by Ms. Lindsay Baxey, Program Director of Human Resources and recommended by the Superintendent for approval. 9.8, employee suspension presented by Ms. Lindsay Maxey, Program Director of Human Resources and recommended by the Superintendent. 9.9, .9, reinstatement reimbursement of sick leave due to line of duty illness, injury, medical examination presented by Ms. Lindsay Maxey, Program Director of Human Resources and recommended by the Superintendent. And then 9.10, leave without pay presented by Ms. Lindsay Maxey, Program Director of Human Resources and recommended by the Superintendent. Dr. White, I yes, have sir. a comment. Right. Uh, Lindsay, if you wouldn't mind, just please standing right where you're at. And, you know, just want to recognize you for the job that you do. And I know coming back from maternity leave, you had a full plate coming back. But, uh, I, again, I can speak for myself. I thank you very much for uh, just the hard work that you do, you put into this job. And the communication piece has been phenomenal. You've done a great job with communicating with all of us. I'm, but uh, I just want to personally thank you for all that you're doing. So. Absolutely. Thank you. And without saying that, that you folks have been a little shorthanded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd say that qualifies as above and beyond, Mr. Chambers. Yep. I would I would definitely agree. Mm -hmm. So what what more can we add to her? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking to her later. <laughs> yeah, and sure. she smiles, that's good. So All right. <laughs> All right, uh, so folks, that finishes up that section. Uh, section 10, we don't yet know. There may be an item moved uh, at the request of a board member Monday night to discussion. Uh, section 11, construction program owners representatives business. And uh, Mr. Destin, sir, uh, if you have something you'd like to share. Or we have another meeting coming up shortly, and, and okay. Dr. Smith will be giving us a, a little rundown on the, the Florosa School Okay. traffic relocation in a moment all right. and all right I'll let him carry okay. forward with that we've run into some interesting questions there uh, I can only imagine well thank you mr. Destin and so dr. Smith I see you've approached let me read the item very quickly 11.2 TPM program number six task order number three Florosa elementary school parent pickup relocation traffic flow reconfiguration Presented by Dr. Bill Smith, Specialist, Facilities Planning and Maintenance, and recommended by the Superintendent for approval. Dr. Smith, would you take off? I'll be glad to. Thank you very much. Uh, we have met with the uh, Depart Florida Department of Transportation. We've met with the Board of County Commissioners. We've met with the County Commissioners Public Works Department. We've met with the school, and we've looked at every part of Ferosa's uh, pickup and drop-off scenario. And we've come to the conclusion that the state is now making some improvements to the stacking lane on the on the westbound traffic. That's probably in motion right now. Uh, we've been down there and we've watched what's going on there. A lot of people are already pulling off the road even though they're pulling off on the gravel. So we're not sure how much impact that will make. Uh, what we have decided to do is propose that we make the correction with the connector road and do the improvements on the east side parking lot. Uh, propose to do that now and make the improvements at the light and the road uh, submit all this information to uh, FDOT and Chipley they make the improvements to their eastbound turn lane see what kind of impact that has let the school <coughs> operate the improvements for a year come back and reassess and if there's anything we can do on the west side of the campus we address it at that point in time uh, as everybody knows it's in the school business uh, there's 37 schools and all 37 are different and you really don't know what impacts you have until you make the improvement so we won't don't want to do something that would make it worse we want to try to make it better so we're going to do a piece we'll propose doing a piece evaluating that and come back and, and tweaking it more later if we need to that's what this is all about yes sir stand by any questions or comments board members I think it's great that we're starting to move on that it's been a thank you for all that and, and it is, I think, uh, prudent to see what effects this change makes before we go forward with any more changes because, uh, you know, it's a very complex situation in front of us. Yep. We need to uh, expand the eastbound turning lanes at the light, and I, and I think DOT is probably uh, <coughs> wanting to do that. It's just okay. the time, timely, timing of it that's still a question. Yeah. But, yeah. but, you know, we'll... we'll do it one step at a time and make sure we don't things make things worse rather than better. Well, Dr. Smith, thank you for your work on this. And Mr. Destin, thank you for uh, accepting the challenge on this committee and, and looking at this because I can only imagine 
It must be very, very complex. Well, this one is very complicated. Obviously, yeah. it's multiple we, agencies. We still hope to get this done by the first day of school next year so okay. we can yeah. see it over a full year's process. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, then, let's go ahead now and move to Section 12, Information Technology Seat Management Contract 12.1, CACI Task Order Number 2-126, Revision 2 for CCTV Additions, Repairs, at Dustin Elementary School, presented by Mr. Dustin Keith, specialist, seat management, and recommended by the superintendent. I, I have a yes, question sir. real quick. And Eric, I know when you called us yesterday, uh, I wasn't actually looking at my agenda here, but I, I have a question with the the, uh, the repairs, the money. Is that coming from the uh, from the safety uh, money that we're getting from the state, or is that uh, internal funds? Is it internal? Okay. Okay. All right. Moving to 12.2. CACI task order number 2-127, revision 1 for the installation of OCSD E-rate network equipment presented by Mr. Dustin Key, specialist seat management and recommended by the superintendent. 12.3 CACI task order number 2-128 to provide a National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, based assessment of the existing Okaloosa County School District's information system presented by Mr. Steve Horton, Assistant Superintendent of MIS and recommended by the Superintendent. Moving on to Mr. Attorney, your business, sir. No report today. All right, thank you. Superintendent, you've got some out-of-state trip requests and you may have some other business, sir. Yes, sir, just a few things. First, uh, I do want to thank um, Mr. Butler, Ms. Cox, uh, the union for including us in the um, Red for Ed. I think that was a great, uh, great event. A lot of the teachers and, and administrators across the school district wearing red to support uh, public schools and public funding. So I just very much thank you uh, for us partnering in that endeavor. Also, uh, just since we were just talking about this a second, Dr. Bill Smith, um, which he's gone, so he's going to miss the uh, compliment. <laughs> so just coming in and doing a great job. Um, with the fluorosa situation, um, but also Walker Elementary um, as well. So has literally gone out there, put eyes on those facilities. I very much appreciate that, and working with the uh, the county um, and the state. So I think that's uh, once again you talk about partnerships that makes a difference. And I do want to just say I, I bring this up each each meeting because we're going through it, and I think it's important. Um, we continue to meet with our ESC parents, and our, we met with our ESC parent advisory committee. Dr. Kelly was there, which I appreciate taking part in that. Um, and what we've in essence done as we've been meeting with these parents and we have another meeting today is we're getting their input um, and advice in terms of, hey, how can we be um, even better? And the interesting pieces hearing the stories um, from these uh, parents or from these families. At the North End, Mr. Bryant was there, um, took part in uh, the meeting um, yesterday. So what we're getting is valuable. Um, information the ESC parent um, advisory committee once again very valuable and I do want to say to the board and into the public as well because we still have um, parents you know you know can I be on the advisory um, committee well there's only so many unfortunately there's only so many people that can be on the advisory committee we've gone after today we will have been in the central north and south end of the county meet with the with the ESC parents uh, myself uh, Mr. Palmer, uh, Miss uh, Miss Summer, um, we will do this again. We're going to do another round. We're going to try to hear from as many parents as possible. But just some of the things that have come out um, so far, which I think is great, they give a suggestion about um, really top ten questions, for example. And the top ten questions could be fifteen questions that ESE parents would want to know. So, new parents into the ESE program, you know what are some of those common types of questions that they may want to know so we're going to not only um, do that we're going to put that on the web page we're going to make a flyer that will go in guidance and a flyer that will also go to parents when they have an IEP meeting also a lot of discussion about the IEP process and the time that that takes and some of that is going to be a suggestion that came up as well it's they suggested that we have parent um, training so we're going to look to do something like that on a quarterly basis unless the advisory committee comes back and says hey maybe we do it more often uh, but some of the time piece is as you as some of you know it's not just the ESC it, it's it's the time that it takes before a student 
um, becomes an ESC student and, there, and some of the time is purposeful. Uh, but we need to do an even better job of explaining this to, to families. So I appreciate that. Uh, training for teachers. And uh, one of the things I'll say, the, uh, the parents have been very, very supportive of our, of our teachers, which I appreciated, and our ed support. Um, but one of the pieces that, that have come out from teachers as well is we, we need to do um, some additional training, not only for our ASE teachers, but also for some of our um, gen ed teachers. So that has come out. Transitioning from pre-K to K or grade five to grade six or grade eight to grade nine and what that looks like has come out. So there's been some great um, suggestions that have come out that I think that we will be able to um, really put into place. But I have, um, and then Mr. Bryant and Dr. Kelly will probably share some things as well, but what I've reiterated is you know, some of what we're talking about has um, been around for a while. And I, 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 use, the, I use the Rome, the Rome analogy. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, and we will not be able to correct everything in the next three months and maybe not even the next 18 months so to speak. So some of this will we will do, and some is going to take two years, three years about building a culture um, for these students, for these families. But I want to end this by saying um, two things. We should have the final report back from the state, um, which I'm hoping at the April 7th board meeting, we will do a, um, we'll do a report for the board and make sure that that's very clear. But the other piece that I want to make very clear is that our ESE um, teachers, our ESE ed support, our schools are, are working extremely hard for these students and for these um, families. And I've been proud to see that that has come out. And in, 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 in cases where it's otherwise, I think even a lot of the individuals, those are some anomalies. But when those situations occur, we're, we're, we're taking that serious and we're going to handle it. Excellent. Very good, sir. Anything else or any comments about that matter, board members? Thank you. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and move to section 15 then. Uh, Mr. Destin, uh, board members business, if you have anything, sir. Um, I, I take it for granted we all received email from the city of Mary Esther about the, yes, sir. About okay. the road issue. And I don't know if staff has talked with them to see what it is they're requesting that we do. Um, I will go and meet with the mayor, uh, okay. meets with the board's approval and okay, try sure. to get a little more specific specificity on what it is they're asking us to do and I think that has to deal with the uh, highway 98 it, expansion it all the way from Navarre all it, the way yes okay. it does so yeah. then that's still years away yeah, it so, is yeah and uh, I want to thank mr. chambers for his work with the with those ESC committees right. uh, that's a step in the right direction uh, Rome wasn't built in a in a day but uh, I think the rumor has it that it burned while Nero was fiddling, <laughs> so uh, we want to avoid that outcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Destin. Mr. Bryant. Uh, first of all, I want to wish the uh, Crestview Bulldogs That's boys good. basketball team good luck. I understand they're going to be playing their first game tomorrow, the Final Four, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I believe it was. So, uh, but. You know, as a representative for that school, it's really exciting to see see the boys uh, be able to go up there. Coach Greg Watson's done a great job uh, with them, so we wish them nothing but the best, and hopefully they can bring home a state title. But if not, we know they're going to be great representatives of the Okaloosa County School District. I would also like to, uh, and I saw Amy Dale was in here, but she left, so she must have thought I wasn't going to talk about her, but I am. Uh, I had the opportunity along with about 20 other educators the other on Saturday to go uh, through the uh, poverty simulation training. Uh, I will tell you, it, you know, I had done it before, uh, but it's always great to have a refresher, but just the experience of, of putting yourselves in, in the shoes of what our families, what our students have to go through. And again, it's, it's just, uh, you know, it doesn't really go into, uh, it's just a quick training but you know these people are dealing on a daily basis and we try to put one month into two hours uh, so you know the struggle is real and to have this uh, particular opportunity for our employees to uh, go through this training I think it's great it helps them be able to uh, have a little bit more compassion with our parents with our students uh, and help them understand what these people might be going through 
and then also mr chambers i you know again want to say thank you for reaching out to our uh, ese community cbs all of those uh, parents who have been crying out to us to uh, let them at least be heard and i think you know these meetings that you're setting up it gives them the opportunity now to come and share their thoughts on it and you know to be honest with you it, when i went to the one yesterday you know it was very uh, it was a very well meet, uh, well rounded meeting nobody was attacking anybody we did get a lot of compliments on our teachers uh, but again the concerns are there and i think you put it eloquently to those parents like listen we we hear you we're going to do whatever we can to be transparent and do the right things but you have to give us a chance to to make it right and again the road being built in three months isn't going to happen but at least they know they know that they're being heard now and uh, dr kelly with that parent advisory committee thank you very much for that the vo their voices are now being heard so that to me is a step in the right direction so thank you sir and thank you dr kelly thank you mr bryant dr kelly well, I could just tag on to that and say, listening to those ESE parents and the stories, uh, I think it brought a lot to light that we might have speculated about, but speculation is one thing and having intimate knowledge is another. And uh, for, uh, for me, I think the lady sitting next to me, for instance, I believe that consistency was her point of view. And of course, for me, that was one of the things I ran on in my own campaign. So I appreciate that we are looking as a district at being consistent uh, across all things and uh, it just pointed out again as with HR the importance of training and I know you and I've had private conversations about potential training to come forward and I'm very appreciative of that because I think that can help resolve some of the things that we're facing and uh, and put a good a better face on things and, and a, a better handle on things for those people that have to daily grapple with those situations in their classrooms. So I think that will be key for us going forward. Uh, on other matters, I'd just like to remind everybody that I do think of our teachers recognizing that very soon we'll be approaching the end of the third grading period. And I know as a school principal, and, and you did too, Dr. White, we always look to our students and our staff to say, okay, now we're in the crunch time. You're either going to make it or break it. And encouraging people to put forth that last little spurt of energy and motivation to do their best here towards the end. So that third grading period staring us right in the face now. And then lastly, that we're looking at spring break and our students will be in places they're not normally in, in so take precautions on the highway and the malls and places where we don't normally see our students and recognize that they're there and just uh, treat them with ultimate care all right thank you dr kelly mr van Jay. yes sir well last friday we all got soused up and went out yeah, we and did uh, that. read it was a great time and i personally like that day that a lot to get into that so that was fun and then uh, this week, Mr. Bryan and I were both um, enjoyed uh, some music for the Sinfonia uh, Emerald Coast, where our students go in and get to play along with the symphony. It was a great program. It's the first time I had had that experience and really enjoyed that. would like to also recognize um, uh, one of our education partners out there, the Emerald Coast Science Center. Um, they're celebrating 30 years, and so before STEM was a cool thing that we now know it is. Um, I remember that because this they started out ca being called the Focus Center. And uh, it was actually the Junior League of Fort Walton Beach, which I happen to be a member of, but I didn't sit on that committee. But our former superintendent, Dr. Alexis Tibbetts, did. She was a science teacher then with what we called the Learning Center. And she was instrumental in working with that committee to start that Focus Center. Well, they've come a long way. And they're celebrating 30 years this weekend with a big celebration. And uh, the, the just numerous field trips we've had there and have sparked, you know, science um, and, the, and the STEM categories for those students, like I said, before it was even cool. So I want to shout out to uh, Diane Frazier is the director there, along with Lisa Parkinson, who coordinates all the trips and everything. I want to congratulate them on, on having that there in our community where those um, students can go in and, and continue that. And I'm sure I see Ms. Branscombe shaking her head because I'm sure she thinks that's great too. So congratulations to that organization and their partnership with uh, the school district. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vancheck. All right, so uh, that kind of takes us through all the various uh, items and issues on the agenda. 
certainly board members, you'll have time to communicate with the district and the superintendent if there's anything in particular. And <laughs> it may go the other way in some cases, as we know. Um, I don't think there's any other business unless there are any comments from staff or the superintendent. Mr. McKinnis, we're good? Sure. All right. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. White.